Quiet on the set. Quiet on the set. Oh, hello, everybody. It's Danny and Wanda from Deep South Homestead. All right. So, yeah. Let her do the announcing tonight. I did do it yes. for once. For once, I let you do it. You let me do it? I couldn't help it. <laughs> hey, Gemini. Hello, Miss Denise. We are already in a weird mood. We are. I'm so about half asleep. Just have to forgive us. Yes. Hey, Lou. And Firefly, Firefly and, and Miss Dolly. Dolly and Mary Beth. Amanda Foreman. Miss Rosemary. Yeah, so. We got a whole bunch of people popping in here all of a sudden. I guess so. Oh, it is Saturday Lord. night. It's Saturday night. It's hot. And it's been a usual homestead day. It's been a usual homestead week. Or been a time. busy homestead day. Right. Adrian's on the coast of North Carolina. Yeah, Boy, you better get back to South Carolina where you belong. And I see Jan and Buckeye. Mama tried. Farming, farming in the backyard. backyard. Said they're editing a video for you right now. Editing a collab video. Oh, okay. They're part of my Cherokee tan. If anybody don't know, we have a Cherokee tan versus Seminole pumpkin uh, playlist. And a lot of people in the chat are in the playlist. They've done videos. They're growing Cherokee tan pumpkins. Deep South Texas is one of them. His is growing all over the place, too. Ah, we got people canning while they're watching us. I like that. I like to see people working in canning. Sherry and Steve and Frank Lake Effect. Hello. We got people from way up north. Space Girl from Minnesota. Papa Truck. Well, Adrian said you got some good people taking care of the animals. <laughs> Simple Grower. Hey, that's pretty cool. I hadn't seen that one before. And New Mexico, Yvonne. Oh, yeah, Yvonne from New Mexico. And Eva. Eva says she's glad to be able to set in. Happy yeah. Early Father's Day, Danny. Megan, thank you so much. Only the second person today has told me Happy Father's Day. Oh, Frank. Saw what food security is going to look like. Empty shelves in Walmart. Oh, Frank. Wow. Yeah. I'm telling you, this that's not the first person that said that their Walmarts had not as much food on it. It was getting worse. And ours is restocking, so ours is iffy here and there anyway. But we've not seen the empty, empty shelves except the ones that are moving around right now. Uh, Beth, uh, it could just be YouTube, girl. YouTube's taking people's notifications away from them. Uh, uh, thank you, Ms. Denise. Yeah, a lot of people said they had to resub. Yeah. So if you don't see Deep South up, just come over to our channel, resub. Excuse me, um, resub. We usually have a video every day, but I missed. Was it yesterday? We missed a couple of days, probably. I can't uh, keep up some days, so. Charles, I think biochar. Biochar is actually as an ancient thing that's done with uh with with growing. They still do it in China. They do it in some of these other countries. I think it's a good thing if you're able to do it. Uh, thank you, Amanda. Um, Simple Grower said, just picked a bunch of strawberries today. Wow, ours is gone pretty much, ain't they? Yeah, but I've got some in the green stalk, and I'm going to be seeing how they do in my green stalk planter. If you don't know, it's a vertical planter. It's five tiers, or you can get three or four or five tiers, whatever you want. And mine, I put strawberries in some of them, and I put some Malabar spinach. And I still have a couple of um, tomatoes and some carrots. So mm -hmm. we're going to take the carrots out shortly. We're going to take the tomatoes out because they're old. And we're going to rearrange it and put some more stuff in it. Steve said they're canning right now. Um, Dennis, thank you. Uh, oh, let's see. Eileen says, my Walmart this week. What? She took her message away. Okay. She didn't finish it. Um, I she guess. didn't finish it, I guess. Yeah. And Homestead Hippie says, Happy Early Father's Day from the hot 109 actual temp. Well, it was 107 here today, but it wasn't the actual temp. It was the heat index. Beth says she needs to send us some squash because she's been canning a lot of it. I know that. Well, we have to. So we have been canning a good bit in the last, what, two weeks? Yeah. We've, well, we've been canning for a while because we did our English peas. We did green beans. We've done potatoes. We still got potatoes in the floor. Um, uh, then we started the salsa. We've canned peas, squash. 
What else? I know there's more peaches. Well, we've got peaches, yeah. We bought a few peaches, uh, but our peaches on our tree came in, and we put up quite a few jars of peaches in the last few days. Charles says, music is so loud, I can't understand what's being said. Well, if there's music being played, my friend, it's on your end. It ain't on our end. Yeah, we have no music going. Does anybody else hear music? Uh, Lake Effect said, so they canned potatoes today. Hey, Heat Bruce Index Lord. was 93 at the White Picket Fans. Uh, Bruce Ard's having a meetup. Now, you're going to have to tell me what day. They're in Louisiana. And I know they've been posting it everywhere. It's going to be a homestead meetup in probably two or three weeks or next, sometime in July. But you'll have to tell me what day. Um, if you're in Louisiana or close enough that you'd like to go, get with Bruce Ard Homestead on the date, July 6th. Okay. July 6th in uh, it's somewhere toward Lake Charles, Louisiana, I think. I'm not sure. All right. What Mama Tribe said it's been weirdly cool with low humidity. About 15 things went by. I didn't get the answer. None of them. Um, yeah. Oh, Amanda says we're busy building our chicken coop. Good deal. Why would these be blooms on pea vines but then not produce peas? Why would, Why would be? there be blooms on a pea vine and not produce peas? Sometimes... The, pea, the blooms will fall off. If they don't get pollinated good, they just fall off. Or if the weather's bad or something like that, if it's too wet, they'll fall off. Um, you know, so it could be a number of things. Yeah. Uh, Eileen says, my Walmart's pretty empty this week, too. Bruno Possum from Ontario, Canada. Hmm. And somebody was asking about Firefly Moon Pie, if she had any quilts being sewn. Yeah. She put up one on the uh, Deep South Gathering Place that is gorgeous. Y'all ought to go over and see it. It is beautiful. Um, okay. Fresno, They're in California. Lake Charles, Lake Charles, Louisiana. That's Georgia. Jared. He said it's 94 and 20% humidity. So what is it here? Here a while ago, or today, it was 96 with 78% humidity. Which yeah. gave us a heat index, I think they said, of 107. Yeah. All right. Gemini says she has a new bug in her garden. Cucumber beetles. Nothing helps. And she says, help. Help. <laughs> have we, do we have cucumber beetles? We don't have cucumbers, though. I don't guess we have cucumber beetles. Yes, we do, because I've got them on that vine out there. I yeah, just harvested only... some. But, I mean, we oh, have... that's right here at the house, so it's not yeah. out in the field. No, we don't have any bugs like that. Yeah. Someone called eating collards as a poor white trash food. Laugh out loud. Collards is good stuff. Collards is a good thing. I don't care what anybody says. It's a southern thing. It's a southern thing. That's right. We eat grass. We eat, we eat greens. Nova Scotia's had ra heavy rains three times a week for the last six weeks. It probably won't plant till July. That was Rodney. Um... Had my first Alabama, Alabama red okra, okra this morning. morning. Dang, it was good, Alabama Garden said. I mean, you can't ruin okra. Okra is just one of them things that you just got to have. The auto salvage outlaws may have been. Hello. And Tracy Gunn's wife. Beautiful Ann said it rained just a little bit there and cooled off. But things is feeling real good. We thought we was going to get a rain today. It thundered and thundered, but... Like usual, it went around us. We didn't get nothing, but we had a we had a pretty cool morning this morning. We went to the U picket again this morning. Yeah. We uh picked what was it uh, six buckets of food. We got two of pink eyed purple holes, and the rest was tomatoes, onions, and peppers. Yeah. And squash. Then you picked up some squash. Yeah, Steve said they just yeah. got back from the U pick field today. Isn't it awesome? It's, it's awesome. There were so many people there though. By the time we left, we left oh, about seven. We left about seven thirty, and there was so many people yeah. there. There was hundred. I had to be a hundred people there. Or more. But at least people are going. That's the beauty. That's, of well, it. nobody's raising anything. They don't have a choice. It's just playing. Yeah. Well, and the prices in the stores and stuff. It's so much easier to get it there. Mm -hmm. It's a blessing said we miss fried okra. Can't grow it in Washington. Send us some. Send us some. I, I'm wondering if we need to plant another row or two just in case. He's got some up. How tall is your okra? Oh, my okra's up about that tall. But it ain't doing good because we ain't had no rain. Um, well, we had rain, but it was only that one time. 
Yeah, uh, Denise, uh, thank, uh, thank goodness for you pick your place. Um, oh, Jan says, soil temp is sweet and sweet potatoes is 78 at 6 inches, 76 at 8 inches. Should I check deeper? Um, What's the outside temperature? Oh, uh, I was... What was ours? Do you know? Ours was in the 50s. Was it that cold? Yeah, it was like 59. That's too cold. Yeah. Cherokee tans are just starting to turn yellow. How long should I wait to harvest? That's deep south Texas. You can leave them on unless you unless you see the uh like the vine borers or something like that trying to get to them. But make sure you cut that stem long because if you cut that stem short, it's gonna ruin on you. That stem needs to be at least four inches long. Leap of faith says, "Sorry about your corn getting damaged. It happens almost every year. Yes, some." But this time, this time it got it all. It was at the wrong time, wrong time. exactly. Now yeah. my candy corn was not as far along as Danny's, and it popped back up, and it's starting to tossle. So I might get a little bit of candy corn, but his was at the point that it was already trying to tossle, and it blowed it down so it didn't finish pollinating. So Mama tried, says so she picked, hit the you pick it Thursday. Um, picked up three bushels of cream corn, half a bushel of peaches, and two buckets of tomatoes. Well, we got aggravated on. We bought a few peaches. I mean, we had tons of peaches to put up off our trees, but we decided to buy one in baskets of peaches and got home, and it was not a claim free peach. That thing, we had to whittle the peach off <laughs> of the seeds. That I was, is. Danny was not a happy camper. Yeah. I was expecting to twist that thing and take it in half and have perfect halves. No, no that, that didn't happen. You could not get it, the peach off the... And I guess maybe if we'd have let them sit in the floor till they almost rotted, they might would have. Nope, they won't do it. If it ain't claim free, free, so it, ain't ain't free it won't do it. What is the little green worm eating holes in the rattlesnake bean pots? It's in the... Eating the eating pots? holes in the pots? Or, or they probably it, meant plants. Uh, yeah, I think so. More than likely is what they meant. Uh... It's probably, uh, sometimes cabbage worms will do that. Uh, there's a ton of different worms that, that actually does that kind of stuff. They were picked when we got there. I bet there were over 200 people. Oh, that was probably 100. When we got there this morning, about 7, about 7 7.30, there was over 100 people there. Do you think you pick it as worth it to financially, financially to supplement your garden? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Eleven dollars for a five gallon bucket. Yeah, that's all you can put in uh, it. And we packed it with whatever we I mean, could we, pack. We packed little stuff in the cracks in the yeah. hole. Peas, peppers, I mean you cucumbers, name cucumbers, cucumbers, squash. Anything in a bit in the crack. Fix it and and if you package it right, I mean if you're a really good packer for that eleven bucks. Eleven bucks you can get a lot. You can get stuff. a lot. And if you just go haphazardly and pile a few tomatoes. Yeah, if you in, start throwing these big old giant peppers that you can't hold in your hand and they're hardly in there, you ain't gonna get nothing. You gotta you gotta take time, pick a pepper, pick a big pepper, pick a little pepper, pick a small tomato, pick a big tomato, pick some peas, and pick some rearrange corn, them at the end. Pick just stick it in there and make it fit. Yeah, and Overall, the amount of food we've gotten, we've made three trips, and I'm going to do a video on some of this in a little bit. Uh, yeah, I just got to have time to get it all processed before we get to it. But I'm going to work on the pricing, and is it worth it? It's going to be one of those things where I'm talking about it, because for us, we've still got okra coming up, but we bought some okra. We've still got corn that I will have. We've got peas, but we bought some of each one of those because... With the weather going the way it is, we don't know. So I'm going to do a little bit of comparison shopping type thing. Lou's Northern Home says they got something to eat holes in the leaves and they check and can't find it. Usually that's called a flea beetle. The flea beetles mm -hmm. will do that. They'll just look like somebody shot it with a shotgun. There'll be so many little holes in it. Okay, the name of the you pick it is Charlie's You Pick in Wiggins, Mississippi or Loosedale, Mississippi. Uh, Charlie's You Pick. And I'm not sure if there's any more around. Do you know? I think I looked online, and in Mississippi, most of the U picks are blueberry farms. So yeah, there's not there's another oh, Mitchell Farms. There's a Mitchell Farms. There's it's a, around Collins. Somewhere like that, and then there's a there's another one. I can't think of the name of it right now. And I'm not um, sure if Mitchell Farms is actually a U picket or if you go there. I think it is. I think I remember it's U picket. Uh, Jan, if your Danny corn is over knee high, it's time to pour the nitrogen to it, girl. Put it to it. That's what she says. Second fertilize tomorrow. Pour it to it. Hello, Overlook Valley. Um, 
we're going to be doing a, a collaboration with Overlook Valley. I'm supposed to find out about that next week, so be looking for that and keeping up with Overlook Valley because they're putting a video up the first of the week about what it's going to be, and we'll put one up sometime later in a week or two. <laughs> uh, leave a pace so they don't have a you pick it there in Kentucky. Um, so what do you do the for Flea Beetles? The Homegrown Variety Show. Hello. Uh, flea Beetles, Deep South, uh, I haven't found anything to do with them that's very successful. I mean, they just, they're, they're horrible. Besides using a hard chemical on it or something. The Living Garden. A lot of people popping in. Lou's Northern Home. Some of these may have already been. Yeah, they were already on there. Yeah. Oh, I got to move. Um, now, um... Yeah, we, uh... We're getting ready to go into another canning frenzy. I uh, wanted to can peas today. I come home and mm -hmm. separated all the buckets out and got all the peas into a specific bucket. She run them through the shelter, shelled them, and got them canned. Yeah. Uh, Firefly Moon Pie says, how's the cabin going? Are you cooling it? It's How not are we been cooling? bad. Actually, it ain't been bad. Even though the temperature outside is bad, that thing cools off really fast in the evening. And we, we just put a little fan in the window when we're over there and use our little tiny generator. It works Yeah, good. we've got a little mini generator, and the fan will run approximately four hours on it. And I put it in the window, and it draws that night air in, and it cools off within the first 15 minutes. And it's really not that hot because we've had cooler temperatures even during the day in the last four or five days that not been hot. It ain't been too bad. Uh, Denise, give your Cherokee tans a little bit of miracle grow on, the, on not on the leaves, but on the roots. It'll be, it'll do fine. Yeah. What kind of peas? We did pink eyed purple holes yeah. today and we have red ripper peas in the garden. And Danny said they were up. They're up about that tall today. They're just popping through the ground. Sierra said they processed their first There's meat birds. Meat birds, I've seen that. Isn't that great to know that you have a freezer full of meat? We still got meat birds. Yeah, I know. Uh, we eat at least one a week, and and when I say one, we eat a half of one. We don't even eat a whole one, and it makes several meals. I finished off the last of one today in stir fry. We had fresh peppers, zucchini, squash, onions. Chicken breast. And yeah. throw the chicken breast that was left yeah. over in it. It was really good. Yeah, people talking about the fire ants. I'll tell you what, those things are from the bottomless pit. they from the devil himself. Especially if you got the imported fire ants like we do. Yeah. Our, our black eyed pea patch is looking really good. This will be our first year at planting these, Beth said. We had pretty good luck with the black eyed peas. They I've just, still got some in the cellar that I uh, can. Yeah, them things did the real good. The fresh black eyed peas are awesome. They are. They really, have a really different good. taste than a dried black eyed pea. If you can chicken, do you prefer raw pack or parboiled? Well, I've done the raw pack, and I don't. I mean, I it tastes reasonably the same. But I don't like the look of the raw pack in a jar after it's been raw packed. It just looks really nasty. So I would rather kind of cook my chicken and then process it. That's how I usually do it. But I tried the raw pack this last time and just the look. It, it's got all the stringy stuff and all yeah. that. I like a pretty jar. And I like it to look nice so that I don't, I don't question whether it's bad or not. Beth says, Danny, do you know how to get rid of these dang moles? Well, they say chewing gum, Beth. You can take juicy fruit chewing gum and uh, dig down in their little holes where they make their tunnels and put it in there, and supposedly it gets rid of them. Richard is in Ohio. He said there's tornado warnings I saw that, again yeah. in Indiana headed toward Ohio. So we need to be praying for that area. I'm telling you all what, if you was over on Patreon and you saw our videos over there about the soil, man, we're it's just... It's crazy. We're going through some really crazy times. We're having to learn how to farm all over again. We've tried mixing two mounds. It doesn't. It doesn't work. It didn't work here. We how did you, that. One how time. do you fight powdery mildew on your squash and zucchini cucumber, Sammy? Go check out Hoss Tool. Uh, they have a video up about what they spray on their squash to keep it from getting the powdery mildew and all. 
and it's a it's an organic chemical I can't remember the name of it but Hall's tool has that video up Lou's Northern Home says they are getting hammered I've been following Lou on Facebook some and I swear some of y'all just don't catch a break with that all the rain and the tornadoes and stuff that's going through Delaney said he hit a yellow jacket nest today and got Ooh. tore up. I hate them things with a That's passion. That's what you almost got bit. I almost got into them. Yeah, week? it was last week. Yep. Yeah. Not knowing, and it was it was my shoes. <laughs> Isn't that what it was? No, it no, was that, a was, that was a hornet nest in your shoes. Yeah, it was a hornet nest. In yeah, my I got shoes. bit by a hornet last week, two weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, Danny, it is called. B1 carb for mildew and it does work. Yeah, bicarb. It's called bicarb for mildew. Beth has actually used that. Yeah, I, yeah, she's using it right now. I couldn't remember. I knew carb, but I couldn't remember bicarb. Yeah, Beth and her husband have set up using most of the house tools and the house uh, <clears throat> irrigation and stuff, and she is well, well pleased with it. I talked to her this week, and she really likes that stuff. We yeah. like our house tools. We love we're our house tools. We're working on the irrigation and stuff. I'll be probably ours. in contact with Greg or um, Travis this, probably this coming week to see about getting the rest of the stuff we need because we've and, got to have it. And we have in the link below, we have a, a link to house tools. And plus in my Cherokee Tan playlist, I added house tools um, video they put up today or yesterday on uh, the Cherokee Tan Pumpkins. You guys need to go check that out. They have it looking awesome in a high tunnel. They have the, the sides down or whatever, the top off. That that whole thing's full. He planted 20 seeds, and it's full it's of full. Cherokee, Cherokee tan pumpkins. It's, it's gorgeous. It's just pretty to look at. Are we growing any winter squash, Mama Tried said? We tried. Uh, we planted some spaghetti squash and stuff like that, but the vine borers got them all. I have some yellow squash. She's got a few yellow okay. squash, and we're getting about, I'm getting about two to six or eight squash bugs a day off of them. Just to keep them going. Just to keep them going. And we have to check them morning and evening. Yeah. New Day Farm says they're getting some weather. Yeah. Lou says in North Carolina, their crops are just burning up. Well, that's what we think was happening with the sweet potatoes. The sun is blistering because the ground is cold underneath. so And it's wet. There's no reason for them not to grow. We've never had sweet potatoes not want to grow. So they're getting burnt up here and it's yeah. cold and wet down here. And the mm -hmm. plant's being shocked, I guess, is basically what it looks like. Uh, Alabama Gardner says, uh, or Abama Gardner says, Hey Danny, last time you didn't want to talk about the Back to Eden Garden. What do you think of Gabe Brown and cover crops no-till? No-till will not work here with cover crops. Our ground, I don't know what it is about it. Even though it's sandy, the top surface on it will get like concrete. Mm -hmm. We have got to plow and till this ground. I've tried putting mulch down. I've tried cover crops. I've tried every way imaginable. You have to break the you surface. You've got to, to get break to that up. surface. I mean, it just won't work. And plus, we have so many obnoxious weeds here. Now yeah. they'll break the surface. Now they'll come up. The uh, <laughs> the chamber bitters and all that kind of stuff and crabgrass and thing. It just takes over. Yep. How's the apples doing this year? The tree is loaded. Matter of fact, I've got sticks propped under the limb <laughs> to keep them from broken, uh, breaking off. Yeah, it, I mean, it's just gorgeous if it doesn't fall and break off. Uh, Tracy, we don't have any mushrooms in our area that you can forage for. Everything we have here is pretty much poisonous. We have lots of mushrooms. We have lots of them. I took pictures of them last year, and I'd never put a video up but maybe I can go pull that out in one day and just do a picture show with some music or something. Um, Puerto Rico family says we are getting UV, uh, UBC here that fries the plants. And I think that's probably what's happening here. Um, when is the latest you'll plant the sweet potato slips? We're going to be continuing planting sweet potato slips over the next probably month. Probably the next month. Um, because we had to, he plowed up. We've got a video I just and got it up yet. Um, we plowed up most of the sweet potatoes. He moved all of them that were good over into one row and plowed up the rest. And we're just going to start over with some of it. 
Homestead 36. Olin says, how are your tomatoes doing? Mine seem to be struggling. They have got about two to three feet in stock. Ours are the same way. Uh, the heat index, what it is, anytime a tomato plant gets over 85 degrees, it, it doesn't want to set fruit anymore. And we've had 110, 15, 7, 8 heat index almost daily. And nothing is really working. The plants are just really sitting there. We have Papa Truck and Single Dad Homestead and Florida Homesteader, red beans and rice. Do we have any blackberries? Yes, we have blackberries. They didn't do too good this year. I mean, I guess they did all right, but not not really great. They're kicking in now. They, I, they were, remember the freeze got some The, the freeze them. got the first one. And so I was getting sporadic berries the last couple of weeks. Well, actually for over a month, I was getting a sporadic berry. But this vine over here, I went by and it's just covered in them. They're they're looking awesome. Yeah. Um, oh, Brandon says I have 900 sweet potato slips growing good in Southwest Ohio. I wish we did. I wish we did. We usually plant between six and seven hundred, and this year we probably don't have a hundred up. No, we got about two hundred. Well, a hundred in one garden, and we have about two hundred in the other yeah. garden. Yeah. That that last garden that we planted, we probably planted four hundred in there and probably have a hundred left out of them. So Country Homestead Preacher said they took their shade cloth off because everything was reaching to try to get the sun becoming spindly. Yeah. R B said I got a gallon of blueberry or blackberries today. With our uh, thumbnail is blueberries and Danny and I picked what was it ten gallons of blueberries this week at his dad's farm. Um those things are, there's probably hundreds of berries going to waste out there. Hundreds of gallons of berries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's crazy. Charles, it's not too late to plant yellow squash. You can plant them all the way up to probably, gosh, if you're in zone eight, you can probably plant them all the way up to the end of August. Yeah. Should be doing okay. Lou yeah. said, I'm going to keep planting pole beans. Jan, thank you. And she would let her know. I told her to go to the thrift store and buy junk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, Overlook Valley. All right, our garden is not doing anything just sitting there. That seems to be the general. That's what everybody's is doing. Everywhere no. I look around here, everybody's garden is just sitting. My little cabin garden was just kind of all tiny and it looked. I'm used to things flourishing, and it was just looking, but it's in the shade, and I, I'm giving it that, but over the last, what, three or four days since that little rain, mm -hmm. I had just fertilized it, and my peas just turned this really dark green color. They've got um, blooms got on them and on little and peaches. peaches. Yeah, peas, not peaches. <laughs> It'd be great if they had well, peaches. Well, it'd be nice if they had peaches on them. Peaches on my pea plants. Yeah. We have peaches on the hill and on those trees. I know those trees are loaded. And if nothing messes with them, we'll have a crop of peaches from them. We've got four or five pickings off of this one tree. Uh, Michael says, Danny, I planted apple peach plum trees at four years old. Not one blossom on a tree, and some of them are 10 feet high. Sometimes it takes those fruit trees five and six years. I mean, it just it depends mm -hmm. on the tree. Hello, fairy tale creation. Uh, Mountain Creek Homestead says, Danny, what will make the crops come in so slow? It's very strange. The, the weather. The weather is one of the biggest things. Yeah, Steve, um, we went and picked enough just to have. Really, there's nobody to monitor that. So we just, because we're family, we went over there. I don't know if they'd let anybody else pick blueberries out there or not. That's one of those things that's a family thing. <laughs> that's all I yeah. can say. Hey, Deborah. From South Carolina. Mama tried to say my pole beans are lush and green, but barely any beans. We let the U-Pick it today. Them things that were loaded at the U-Pick. Oh, that's the prettiest green beans for this time of the year. Here, usually green beans are gone. This thing is just, they're tall. They're on um, trellises. And there's just blooms, just thousands of them all up and down every, every plant. I've never seen them grow. I want to know what kind they got. Well, I don't think it has to do with all the fertilizing the water they're putting on it there. Let me go back. Someone told me to use miracle Grow on tomato plants. What do you do? I use miracle Grow on my tomato plants about once every two weeks. I think it's perfectly fine. It's just nitrogen. That's all it is. Charlie said they had blackberries that were really small, got frost bit, but they fruit had... Fruit trees got frost bit. 43 yesterday. yesterday. Wow. 
Remember I told you a lot of people was getting in the 40s. <laughs> do I think the chemtrails, Beth says, have anything to do with the gardens? I think it has everything to do with the gardens because the aluminum that the chemtrails are dumping out raises the pH in the soil unnaturally so that the plants cannot take up phosphorus. And when a plant can't take phosphorus up, then it they just, just sit there. they just sit there. They never do nothing. And a lot of times you'll notice the leaves on the plant start to look purple, especially on tomato plants. And you know that that plant is not getting the phosphorus that it needs. So you need to up the phosphorus even above what it should have in order to get it going. Maddie Girl says, if I mail her some canned peaches, she'd love me forever. Oh. <laughs> they are really good. Danny and I had some for breakfast the other morning. Oh, oh we, we eat a whole pint. They were good. They were good. They were really good. I don't know. Uh, just Me says, that's all. Says, someone can come pick my blueberries. We have a ton of them. Yeah, we're through with blueberries. Ours finished up. Ours have been gone for almost a week. two weeks. Yeah, I know yeah. my man done them picked the last ones when they were out there. Is there one in Wiggins? There's a lot of And is that the one in Wiggins? Yes. That's yeah. the one just outside of Wiggins. There's a lot of blueberry you picket places in Mississippi. Because I went online looking at you pickets and like ten or twelve blueberry places compared to one or two vegetable places so you might check that out if you're interested in blueberries they're usually really cheap okay. yeah jan jones said she's growing stuff in the bales and it's doing good but everything else is not yeah um val said because of the rain last year her garden uh, developed a nitrogen deficiency yeah you have to keep adding it Blueberries are seventeen dollars a gallon at a you pick. Oh, Randy and I were picking blueberries. We pick them ourselves and sell them for ten. Ten and twelve. Ten and twelve. 12. That's twelve. That's right. We went up to twelve. That's yeah, right. Yeah, we we charge twelve when we pick them, and so if I could get seventeen and they picked them, hey, that'd be good. Right. Uh, Jen uh, asked the question, uh, country on state preacher, what causes leaves at the bottom of the green bean plants to turn yellow? Just age, age and heat. Uh, both of them will do them. The leaves on plants die from the bottom going up. We usually just pull them off and throw them out to do. Do I can or freeze blueberries? We freeze everything. When we bring them in, we freeze them. And then as I have time, whether it's in the winter or fall or whenever, I make blueberry jam or blueberry jelly. Plus, if I've got them just frozen fresh from the tree, I can thaw them out a little bit and throw them anything fresh, and it is awesome. And do I'm, not wash your blueberries if you're going to put them in the freezer. Do yes, not do wash not them. wash them. They're better. You can take them out and it's like eating fresh. It's awesome. Uh, my Kubota Delane is doing great. I have no no problem. Other than the fact that the paint scratches off of it real easy. <laughs> well, that's going to be... I mean, he, he loves his tractor. I love He's my tractor. Every day, I drive it every day. day. Denise says she's putting in bone meal. Um... For her phosphorus, which is perfectly fine. You do that. Green sand, any of them like that will work. Work's Grandma perfect. Rose picked the first peach off her tree that she planted two years ago. we got peach trees that's only two years old. we got peaches on them. Yeah. I grant it's really I not good them. to leave the peaches on a tree when they're that young because it will stunt the tree back, but you need to get them all. <laughs> Auto salvage says you can keep the blueberries. They're very healthy. They they're are. Very, very healthy. And I make a pie, I get, yeah, it's a pie that you put cream cheese and whipped topping and sweetened condensed milk, I believe, and blueberries in a graham cracker crust. And you talking about good, that pie is awesome. Mary Beth, usually when tomato leaves start turning yellow at the bottom of a plant, it's because of a virus has hit them. You need to start cutting those leaves off. Get them off of there. Do we have a video on canning peaches? Uh, you canned them yesterday. Did you do a video? No, not recently. I'm in an old one. Uh, we have so many videos, I don't know. Y'all, we have over 1,500 videos are right at it right now. And we don't, I go back and look, and I don't even remember making most of those videos, so <laughs> I can't tell you. But I do have one on peach jam, and I think it's on crazy days, not peach jam, pe peach jelly. It's I'm, I think it's on crazy days. So I made a peach jelly. I don't know about making just peaches. Uh, do you flash freeze your berries or trays first? No. Mm -hmm. Just put them in a gallon bag. Do not wash them and put them in the freezer. Yeah. As long as they're not mushy, they won't stick together. 
Mr. Danny Wurler, white fuzzy caterpillars on green beans. I've never seen them. Well, that makes two of us. I've never seen a white fuzzy worm on green beans. Crazy Days video for that pie, please. I've got one on Crazy Days or Deep South. I don't remember. I've made when I made it before last year or the year before. I did a video. It would be in um, Deep South recipes. I, I have a playlist. Or it would be in What Is It Like to Eat at Deep South Homestead. I have a playlist. If you're looking for recipes, check out both of those. And I have a one that's gluten free. Oh, recipes. this is terrible. What? Michael White said, My cousin bought frozen fruit at the store. They called two days later and said it had been recalled. Too late. She's being treated for hepatitis. Oh, my goodness. See, that's why we don't that's like to go. That's why we don't like to go buy stuff like that. We like to put our own hands on it and pull it and pick it. and. Yeah. Oh, man. That's I want terrible. that pie next year at the Deep South. <laughs> I well, if somebody would come help me make pies one day, we could make pies. I'm just saying, you come visit Deep South sometime and remind me ahead of time I'll make you a pie. The old single dad. <laughs> yes. Well, okay. I made right. peach jelly from yes, the peelings. Yes, from the peelings. Yeah. Only our peelings. We won't yeah. do it from nowhere else. Only our peelings from our trees, and I make jelly. And and yesterday I was gonna save the peelings and make jelly yesterday. But I had a little issue this week that I had to tend to, so I had to take off to town because somebody compromised my bank card. <laughs> I was not happy. We wasn't it. happy that day. At least the bank caught it. They didn't let the money go through. Right. But So I didn't save peelings. It, it all got pitched. So I didn't make um, my jelly this year. Richard said, I'll be your pie tester. <laughs> yeah, I see over Overlook Valley said they could come taste test pies. <laughs> Fairy tale creations. Hey girl. I said that a while ago. Your your mind is my mind is gone, she said. Been babysitting the grandbabies. Uh, it don't take long. Do we make blueberry syrup? Yes, we do. Wow. The Man, hay forty dollars a roll to a hundred and fifty for a round bale. I agree. I Holy said something. mackerel! You oh. know, Wanda and I talked about that. We got to start getting our hay now. Well, one of our friends and she is asked to see ministry in here. I haven't seen Tori yet. She messaged the other day that in California, their feed went. What well, it was outrageous anyway because like we don't twenty four dollars a bag. No, it was twenty four twenty seven. Yeah, we usually pay twelve fourteen dollars a bag for chicken feed. She's she was paying twenty. I forgot twenty four or twenty seven. I can't remember the numbers. It jumped to forty five dollars. Forty five dollars a, a bag, bag for, for chicken, chicken feed. feed. Guys, if you are feeding your chickens, beware. I mean, because we do we feed stuff to ours, but. We have ground out here we can put it on if we have to. But if you do not have ground, be looking for your feed to go up. Just saying. Oh, uh, Dry Gulch says, we got to the U pick in Loosedale today. It is awesome. Why would you drive all the way to Loosedale? Did they mm -hmm. drive past ours? Miss Sharon and them. Oh, because they probably went to the bigger one. Oh, really? I don't know. They got everything at this one. They got at that one, I think. Yeah. Um, well, I the, saw a video. I saw, I saw a video. I saw a comment about. I got videos on my mind. The one at at Wiggins, the Charlie's you pick it is fifty yeah. acres. The one at Loosedale is a hundred acres. Hundred acres, yeah. Well, they actually have eighteen hundred acres all together. Yeah. The well, the hundred acres is you pick. They own the other land and they plant all of that and they sell produce to companies. Uh, everybody's asking, um, where is Amanda? Well, Amanda is making videos, as far as I know. Yeah, she put the little one to sleep, and she's trying to get a video done. She's, I think it's going to be the her first seven days at Deep South, so you might want to check that out sometime tomorrow. Um, she's probably got, she's probably going got her tongue hanging out, and she's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, people realize what it is to can religiously. I mean, that girl has put some canning out this week. Yeah. That girl has worked. Because we have really been going strong. I think I don't even I don't even know how many five gallon buckets of food we canned. I don't either. I mean I'm thinking it's twelve, fifteen of them. No, something. we bought let's see. We went the we've went we We've three went three times. times and got six five and six buckets every time. So I'm thinking sixteen buckets, no, fifteen. We got, 
Ten. We got more than that the first time. Plus, we got boxes of stuff. We got. We brought five buckets the first time. Six buckets one time. We brought seven today. And then we then bought, we bought the boxes. boxes of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Plus, we're on top of what we're harvesting here in Canaan. Yep. I could show you a picture of our dining room floor. You'd probably freak out. <laughs> There's onions all over the floor. There's peaches all over the floor. There's potatoes and tomatoes and watermelon. Well, we get the corn twice. The corn. Um, we don't eat a lot of corn. And a lot of people were saying something about that. Corn is not a big issue. We plant it every year. And if we if it makes, it makes. And we harvest it. If it doesn't, we just, okay, we just don't have corn this year. Mm -hmm. So when we were at the U Picket, I, I, I've i got about 25 ears each time maybe. Yep. Um, and put that up because we don't eat a lot of corn. I, I, I cooked some the other day, and I ate out of it three or four times. I don't think Danny may have eaten once because it just doesn't work well with his system. He likes it, but he doesn't eat it very often. So corn is something I can eat or do without, so I'm not a big deal with that. Canon is work, but the rewards of not going hungry makes it worth it. Yeah, and a lot of people are on this Canon thing, and Canon is worth it. Canning is worth Even it. Even if you have to time. buy your produce, it is worth it's it. It's still worth it. Uh, if you go to town. Matter of fact, if you buy it, it's cheaper than it is if you raise it. Yeah. If you go pick up a can of in green beans or English peas, you do not know where it came from or whatever. You know the processing plant. Maybe it tells you the name of the company. But those peas could have come from four farms and been mixed in a vat. Well, with the first thing, I mean, we got like King Arthur flour. They got a recall on King Arthur yeah. flour because of E. coli. Now, we got a person on here talking about that um, they had a recall on some stuff that they got because they got hepatitis from it now. Yeah. I mean, this is why you do your own stuff. The Homegrown Variety Show said, we are coming to your house, Deep South. <laughs> Yeah, we got all kinds of stuff. We got all kinds of stuff here. We have tragedy just like anybody else, but we we work our way through it. Yeah, and we, com we not compromise, what's the word I'm looking for? We reassess supplement. and supplement. If the corn doesn't work one year, then we just don't eat corn for a while, you know. Uh, like this year, I did buy a little, but for the most part, we don't go. This is the first time. Last year, we went to the U Picket for peppers. That was the biggest reason. We went one time, and we bought peppers, and then God blessed us, and we had peppers. After that, our peppers kicked in gear, and they went crazy. But if we had not went to the U Picket, and our peppers hadn't have kicked in, we'd have just done without peppers. You know, that's just how we roll here. It is. I mean, there's lots of questions there. There's a dairy down the road from the U Picket in Loosedale. Yep. Uh, Beth said, we didn't have a choice. We have to, we have to raise what we eat. Um, Dry Gulf said they went to the one in Wiggins last week. Just want to check out the one in Loosedale. Ah, and then it's gorgeous. <laughs> Overlook Valley Homestead said we milk our own cow and grow most of our own veggies. And a country boy can survive. Mm -hmm. So, if you guys right, all the salvage, we take it one day at a time. Um, White Picket Fence says they got a bag of veggies out of the freezer today and was excited that it, it was Green Giant someone gave us and their heart sunk when it said a product of mexico 90 yep. percent of the stuff is Almost. not grown in the u.s yeah 90 percent probably is not grown in the beautiful land said i have chronic hives because of the food in stores wow you Can must be having an allergic to reaction to something over there yeah an employee at Kellogg's was arrested for urinating into the cereal. We oh. really should be concerned about what we are eating. Time to sow, you are so right. I have heard and seen so many horror stories. I don't even want to eat. I don't eat out. I don't eat nothing unless it's from my place. Usually. Single dad said, tragedy is limited by good prepping and country living. We prep so much stuff. Um, since Amanda's been here, she was asking different questions. I started showing her some of the things I had and she goes, Oh, wow. So you are pretty prepared. She didn't realize like tea. I like to drink tea. I love coffee in the mornings, but all you coffee drinkers store up some tea. Tea is a lot cheaper, easier in case you can't have your coffee. You can't you have can your coffee. Drink you need something. Tea. Yeah. And coffee is very expensive and it's, 
I don't know, it kind of dulls its taste after a year or two. You can store coffee for a while, but it's not as strong. But tea bags and, and loose teas and things like that are pretty cheap, and you can vacuum seal them, and they'll last for a long time, and having some caffeine's better than none. Plymel <laughs> uh, says, I make my own cereal. That's pretty cool. Um, I would not, like to see I'm not sure how they do that. it unless they have a, or something, a steel thing that rolls the oats or anything like that. Um, I don't eat cereal. I mean, that's something I hadn't eaten cereal since I was a kid. Um, North, well, you do a little I do bit if we make granola. If we granola. make granola, she uses some rice stuff in it and some oatmeal. Yeah. Uh, but that's about it. Now, I will eat a bowl of oatmeal occasionally. North Star Prep Star Prep Stetter says those blueberries are gorgeous. That is the prettiest blueberries at his dad's I've ever seen. They're gorgeous. So. Thank you, Auto Salvage Outlaw. I have tea in so many different flavors, and I've got them vacuum sealed. Then I have some out so that when people come and we can have tea, I like my teas, but I like mine in the winter better than in the summer. In the summer, I drink water. Now, water is all we drink, yeah. So, Lou said we were preppers before they were called preppers. Yeah, Danny was too. I think that was what was funny because. We were in town one day after you and I married, and some guy asked you some something. He says, are you a, a prepper? And Danny looked at him kind of funny yeah, because yeah. that term was not what Wasn't he popular used. popular then, yeah. And then, I mean, he would, he he prepped. He, he knew he prepped, but he didn't understand what they were calling a prepper. He had not ever been called a prepper before, and he was looking going, okay. So he had to ask about what that meant. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what was I seeing it there just a minute ago? Uh, Homegrown Valley Variety Show. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, Auto Salvi says, one day we'll get to meet you guys at Deep South. Yep. We are working at it. Mary Beth um, said, we eat a lot of eggs and oatmeal. I, I used to do the same. I still eat a lot of eggs. And we eat oatmeal occasionally. We had grits this morning, which was awesome. Beth says, Danny, what causes blackberries to be sour? A lot of it has to do with variety. Yeah, we have the Arkansas Traveler. That is the biggest blackberries I've ever seen, and they are sweet. They taste. Them awesome. Arkansas Travelers, no guy, no lie, guys. My phones, that they get, they get as big as my phone. Like mm -hmm. those things are huge, especially if you can keep the water to them. Yeah. Um, Michael White said they said they were going to stop making Lipton instant tea, so his wife bought 20 jars. <laughs> wow. I don't use instant, but I do have the, um, whatever you go, call them the tea bags and stuff. Are we preparing a gathering for 2020? I think we're going to wait more toward the end of the year and see how things are going between now and, say, September, October, because right now, I don't see how we're going to manage everything, but I do have a couple of people, actually three different people have yeah. volunteered to help. So I've been talking with them. We're making some plans, even though we hadn't set a date. So we'll, we'll know more toward the end of the year, how things are going uh, and to when we want to set a date. And probably it'll depend on the building. It will. It'll depend <laughs> on the building. We are country, and that's stronger than prepper, 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 prepper in lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle. Living this way yeah. is a lifestyle. We don't call ourselves anything. Uh, Nest Paper said, uh, "Where'd it go? My pantry stock is what got us through job loss more than once." That's what we call it. We tell people it's an LCE, a life-changing event. Uh, just. Prepare. I mean, it could be a storm. It could be the loss of a job. It could be a loss of health. It could be anything. And if you're prepped, it will get you through it. Yeah. All right. So it's a beautiful lifestyle. It is actually it is very a, calming. It is a very calming lifestyle. Um, I don't know what we'd do if we didn't have it. I mean, I've... I've done it my whole life, and there was a six-month period there. I had to live in the edge of town while I was building a new home. And I'm not going to lie to you. I literally thought I was going to go start raving nuts. We're, we haven't been working on the RV. We've been working on the cabin. 
And so the cabin's at a standstill right now because of all this prepping all, all we're the doing. Canning we're doing. But yeah. Danny's actually working on the bed for the cabin. Yep. So he got a little work done yesterday. Right. Uh, yes, I did a lot of the work yesterday. So, so I'm, I'm letting it dry now so that we can begin to start cutting the pieces to put together so that it won't be too loose. I have a video that I was in the process of editing and I haven't got it edited, but Monday or Wednesday of next week you'll see a little bit of progress on the cabin bed and what's the other video I forgot I've got another video in the makes I can't remember oh we was gonna do something today oh we are before our time gets away from us uh, do you see yourself living in the cabin at all the time in the future at some point I probably will once I we, get we kind of we talked about that today I yeah think. but I mean it's gonna be a little bit it'll be, down, a, the it'll be down the road though but we're, we're looking at it but uh, we, we want to give something away tonight you guys look at this these are called chalk tops and top chalk. Now that's a mouthful. Ain't it? <laughs> we have both wide mouth and regular lids to go on them. Let me get it in where they can see. These are for um, fermenting. Yes. And as you know, I do not ferment. So we don't so ferment, so we don't really I don't need hold this. it against you if you do. And I plan on giving you something. And we have a question. We have a question that we're going to ask tonight. And the first person to get it right that we can see on our side, now it may show different on your side. Yeah, well, Dave's we'll, ready to run it back and catch I'll it. I'll run it back and catch it if I have to. Um, is um, It's going to be the winners of this. Yes, now, and, I, and then you will have to email me at deepsouthhomestead at gmail.com, and I'll tell you that again afterward. But you are responsible for emailing me your address. Um the question is... Okay, are y'all ready? I need y'all to tell us if you're ready to do this. Okay, are you ready? There's mm -hmm. Goss Mania. Just popped hey, in. Hey, Goss Mania. We have a delayed reaction. Are you ready? Okay. Beth said yes. Okay. Beth was the first one Beth to say yes. Beth was the first one to say Okay, everybody said Beth, yes. Beth, you going to yes, yes, yes. Ready, 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 ready. Okay, here we go. The question is, what is Danny's favorite dessert and it, it is not and it, tell them what it's not it is not the pe pecan it, cookies it's not a pecan cookie because cookies somebody, are not a dessert we had this argument a while ago he kept saying cookies are dark oh, Lou, Lou just, just Lou. Lou Lou just Lou got it yes Lou, Lou just Lou yes the four layer delight Four layer delight. Okay, Lou, send her all your information. Yeah, deep south homestead at gmail.com. No, we had this discussion because I went back through videos and I saw the video on four layer delight and I said, okay, that's the question. And then I said, wait, they'll mix it up with the pecan cookies. And Danny goes, pecan cookies are not dessert. And I said, yes, they are. No. Amanda come in, she says, yes, pecan cookies are dessert. No. He said, no. So we've had this argument for five minutes that pecan cookies are not dessert. So pecan, is cookie, it? pecan cookies is not a dessert. They're saying that it is. I'm saying that it is not. Yes. So is a pecan cookie a dessert? No. Pecan pie. <laughs> they're a snack. Single dad said they're a snack. That's right. No, y'all don't agree with Danny. Come on. No, cookies are a snack. See, See Golf Mania says no cookies is a snack. Single dad says. Pecan snack. cookies or Jan says are not desserts. <laughs> Everybody best said you. no. Beth, I'm, gonna I'm telling y'all, I know what I'm talking about. A pecan <laughs> cookie is not a dessert. It's a snack. It's a cookie. <laughs> you and Amanda are wrong. I'm gonna ban all these people from coming to I the care. <laughs> if they agree with you, I'm gonna ban. Every one of them agrees with me. <laughs> Some people, Christy says she calls cookies desserts. Country homestead preachers that are just plain good anytime. Now, I'm not going to argue with that. I would take them as a dessert anytime. Cookies are a snack and a meal. See, they're, Baker's they're, mom says I was right. She's well, coming to the gathering. She's Richard, the only Richard one. said they're a treat. It's like I'm like a dog. I get a treat. You know? You're going to get a treat? <laughs> you get a treat. When I'm doing good, you get a treat. That's going to be only two or three of us at the gathering, I see. I see that. looks like it. You're going to have to stay home. Yeah. And all your people's going to have to stay home. Yes, Prepper <laughs> said they can be a dessert, but they are a snack. See? Pecan cookie is my staple, Gemini. Yes, it is. It is a staple thing for me. Mark says they're just food. Oh, I like this. Single dad. Okay, this is what 
I've got plans for the gathering this year. We're not going to have a whole lot of talking or anything. We're mainly going to have some fellowship. But I like his idea, a dessert cook-off at the gathering, because I like desserts. I'm just sorry. But we are going to do one thing that um, Fairy Tale Creations and Mimsy's Garden and I talked about was we're going to do the old-fashioned blue ribbon giving away thing with canned goods. So you guys... Prepare your best canned goods and hope that we have a gathering in the spring because we're going to give away some blue ribbons and some white ribbons and some red ribbons for the best. And we'll probably put them in categories like you would have your veggies and you would have your fruits and your jams and jellies. So we will be giving away a ribbon. Viewer Lance says, I'm rolling in the floor laughing. <laughs> well, I'm just telling you now, some people now know Lou just said she bakes for a living. And that cookies are called a dessert, just like biscuits. You know, I mean, see, I, uh, I'm telling you, a few. Lou people says, come. "Give Danny a biscuit." <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like. Christy a, says, "I'm a sugarholic." I am. Uh, a sugarholic. You are a sugarholic. I will agree with that. These people are learning to know you. But I went to town yesterday. You when in two, two stores, stores. Two stores. And I did not buy one sweet thing at all. She did not buy nothing sweet. Mainly because we run out of money, but I mean, not really, not really. I had to say that. <laughs> We've not run out of money. Well, that's pretty close. It was close. Oh. No pecan cookies allowed in the dessert cook-off. <laughs> that's because they know they would win. Uh, biscuits and gravy is a dessert. That biscuits and gravy is a dessert? That's what all the savage said. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Oh man! Fill the cookies with ice cream and make ice cream cookies. That's called they are a dessert. Then it would be called a dessert, and I agree with that. You take two cookies and put ice cream between. See, it. North Star says that self control. See, you tell me I have no self control. Did I not have some or what? Well, that's only because you didn't have a card. The bank you had your card <laughs> canceled. You had to go to the bank and get a new card ordered, so she didn't have a card to buy her sweets with. I had cash. Let's just be honest. And I, mean, I had look, cash. Look, these, parents want, these people want you to be transparent. You might as well be transparent <laughs> with them and tell them. I didn't have a you card. You told them a while ago that somebody, your, your card was hacked and you had to compromise. And you had to get a new card. It takes a week to 10 days to get that card. So I can't have no So desserts. you can't have nothing for a week to 10 days. I had cash, but I was being very self-controlled. You can't spend cash on, on, on snacks. Yes, you can. That's against the rules. Self-control comes in different forms. That's what I'm saying. Oh. Biscuits are cookies. See, in the UK, biscuits are cookies. Because I sent some stuff to uh, a guy in the UK a uh, couple of weeks ago, and he sent a video back of his kids trying something I sent over there. And we're going to do some videos back and forth in the future on Crazy Days. He is sending me some things from the UK. And when I get them, I'm going to try them. And, and so one of the things I sent him was... Um, the sausage gravy mix and it was really funny when he got the package he sent me a message and he says I'm willing to try most everything but he says I've never in my life seen white gravy and I cracked up and I said it goes on biscuits well I messed his mind up because in the UK biscuits are, uh, are cookies, cookies. cookies. And he couldn't imagine putting sausage gravy on cookies. <laughs> so I had to send him to my video where I made cat head biscuits. And so that made more sense to him. So he may make the cat head biscuits and the sausage gravy. It's all in which, where you live. It is all what you call it, where you live. Aunt B's pickle episode. Thought about that when you talked about Blue Ribbon. Yes. I used to love to watch Aunt B. She was so sweet. I've never seen a cookie tray on a dessert table at yeah, the church, church pot. potluck. Really? Everywhere nope. I go, there's a there's cookies on the table. No, on the dessert. On the dessert. Yes, there is. Oh, you got to go with me to my family gatherings. <laughs> there's always cookies on the dessert table. I was wrong once. I know. Pecan cookie washed down with beer for dessert is dessert. Sinclair, really? <laughs> I, I think it would be better with, um, what what would wash down that pecan cookie? Milk? Oh, uh, no, no, no. What washes a pecan? He drinks water, so I I just drink tell. water. That's all I drink. I don't drink nothing else. Chocolate gravy is awesome. Um, 
chocolate gravy uh. biscuits. Now, are y'all? This is what gets me. People say chocolate gravy. Are you talking about gravy that you've um? What is it? What's the word called? Where you turn it brown before you add your water to it? If that's what you're calling chocolate gravy, then my mama made that all the time because she darkened her gravy every time she put her flour in and to almost burn it. Got it almost to a burn stage. Hunter says, how cold can a sweet potato stand? Anything but a frost. If it gets to be a frost, you lose your plants, you lose your sweet potatoes, you lose it all. Okay. Dr. Pepper with pecan cookies. I used to drink Dr. Uh, Pepper all it, the uh, time. I've not had one in a long, long I time. I ain't no Dr. Pepper. All right. No wonder you're so healthy, Danny. <laughs> that would be debatable. That would be very debatable. Yeah, it ain't that I'm all that healthy now. It's what I did to my body before I started eating like this. Okay, so that is red-eyed gravy. So, okay, what again is red-eyed gravy? A red-eyed gravy is what I'm talking about. That's where you take and put gravy and flour in a skillet and you kind of brown it up a little That's bit. That's called red-eyed gravy? That's we what I call red-eyed gravy. We didn't do that. So what is chocolate gravy? No hot chocolate pudding, basically. Is that it, really? It's just chocolate pudding that's syrupy? And you put it on a biscuit? I don't I don't want chocolate on my biscuit. You buy a chocolate on a donut and it's the same thing. No, a biscuit needs syrup. A biscuit and a donut is almost it's made the same way. A biscuit needs some candy. They both got self rising flour in them <laughs> and you make them the same way. One's got a hole in the middle of it and the other one don't. Now, Danny liked tomato gravy. I've never been a fan of tomato gravy. I made it years ago, but he doesn't like tomatoes that much here in the last couple of years. So he's he's kind of liking the salsa. So that's a plus. Coffee and red eye gravy. I don't know about that one either. Red eye gravy is from Hamdrip. Oh Lord, how mercy gonna kill me yet eating that stuff. I love that. Milk is good with whatever. Ah, <sighs> oh, what else we got? Look, okay. you tell me, my mama used to make donuts when I was a kid. She'd go to town and she'd buy them Wap Biscuits. We you know, made them out of Wap Biscuits. You know, you know what I'm talking about? You kind of tear the paper off and hit them on the corner of the counter and they <laughs> pop open in your face like that and you pull them out and you and you kind of like either cut the hole in the middle of them or you tear it up and you just kind of make it big and make a little hole, put it in that grease and fry it up. And you're trying to tell me a biscuit and a donut is different things. And my mama used Wap Biscuits we to make use donuts. Wap biscuits to make I donuts. know what I'm talking about. I may not be a cook. But I know what I'm talking about. I have eaten biscuits for donuts a many a day. Yeah. We did. We did the walk biscuits. Don't you dare pull the paper off of it and sit it and on sit the on counter. And it'll just pop it'll and pop explode. On its own. We did that to somebody here the other day. I don't, we ain't had no walk biscuits. Somebody. I was at their house. I was at your, was it your mama's or somewhere. Something exploded. And she said it was a walk biscuits or something. Else. I it forgot. might have been at mom's, but we don't buy walk biscuits. I ain't had a walk biscuit in this house. Oh, I know what it was. Did I buy cinnamon rolls? Cinnamon rolls, that's what it was. I bought cinnamon rolls and they popped they on They popped me. on me, yeah. I was going to say, we didn't have wop biscuits in a while. Cinnamon rolls is basically Frank the same said thing. you do put coffee in red eye gravy. My mom used to make what's called streaked gravy with coffee. Gravy? Ooh, tomato tomato gravy with a grilled cheese sandwich. Beautiful land, you gonna, you gonna, I'm going to have to eat after this. I can see it right now. I see somebody better be making something. Whew, Lord have mercy. Michael said, I'm depressed now. I need some cookies. Auto I'm going to have a sad moment here in a minute. You and, you and Amanda are going to have to do something other to feed me tonight. I can tell you right we now. We're going to have to fix something. Auto Salvage says, one of these days, I'll show you how to make homemade grits. We make our homemade grits, and they are awesome. They are, and especially we use Danny Corn. Oh, yeah. Flour, cocoa, milk, butter, vanilla, and sugar makes chocolate gravy. See, I never made chocolate gravy. I may have to go in there and make biscuits and chocolate gravy just because what biscuits scare me like a jack in the box. Yeah, you, yeah, but you, you never know. Like you're waiting on it to pop up. Single dad said, I'm on my way down, Wanda, Danny. Come on. Oh, Lord. What's this talking Bring about? Cinnamon rolls come. from a can. Yup, once I started making homemade cinnamon rolls, I got back from can stuff. Same with make... chocolate chip cookies. We don't really make them. I mean, we. I don't make a lot of things. I know people think I eat 24-7 and all sugar, but I don't. And so when I want something, I will go to town and buy like one of those things, of cinnamon rolls. I'll make them, and then it would probably be a year before I'd ever do it again. And I am not big on making a whole bunch of cinnamon rolls to have here because I would eat them every day. So we got a family that are already heading to the pantry for a brownie mix. <laughs> 
Well, I have a brownie recipe, and I don't know if I've ever put it up on either channel. It is a homemade brownie recipe that is to die for. And you can dress it up. I make, I just make it really simple, but you can add nuts and things to it, walnuts, pecans, almonds, whatever you want. You could add more chocolate chips, chocolate syrup in the centers of it, whatever, but it's a great, just generic brownie recipe. I need to do that one day. Look at that. Michael said his cinnamon roll popped in the refrigerator one night. Sound like a gun going off. <laughs> drop biscuits. Now, we used to make some drop biscuits. Yeah, I've, I've made drop biscuits. I've made mayonnaise biscuits. Danny had never heard of mayonnaise biscuits. Um, Auto Salvage says, I'm hungry now. How about fried fat back with fresh tomato slice and a fresh... Oh, my word. <laughs> Y'all were making us hungry. I came on here hungry when I came on here, and I'm really hungry now. Well... Okay, so the recipe for the brownies, I'll try one day to make that and post it. And y'all, don't get mad at us because we don't put recipes in the description because we I don't have them. time to sit and type out everything. I, pause the button, pause the video, listen to what it is and write it down and pause it. And Danny and Amanda messed up this week because on one video they said eight cups and the other video they said six. It's actually sausage. six. Is it six? You sure? Six. Six cups of peppers. Six. Yep, we, we caught that afterwards. Yeah. So, if you're, but if you like peppers, add eight cups. It ain't going to hurt. It's not going to hurt. It depends on your taste. That's yeah. what we wanted. So, and if you want five cloves of garlic, put five. If you want ten, add ten. It's not going to we change don't, a whole lot. We don't put things like cilantro and all that in our salsa when we make it because... Our, salon, our salsa is a generic salsa. We use it for making uh, spaghetti. We use it for making chili. And we can add all that stuff in whenever we get to making it. We'll put cumin in it and some uh, oregano and stuff like that. depends on it. And then sometimes you can put it in a food blender and you can just blend it up and make pizza sauce out of it. Or you can take it open <laughs> a jar and eat it directly with chips. Florida homesteaders that I just got done eating an all-you-can-eat chicken and ribs at a restaurant and he's getting hungry. <laughs> we had a hamburger. And some potatoes that I cooked in the oven. Uh, Marshall says, Danny did the vinegar, Epsom salt, and uh, and sore work to kill the Kogon grass. The only thing that we found to kill the Kogon grass was pure salt. And it did do it. I, I, North Star says they haven't eaten in 9 and 10 hours. So they're really getting really hungry. You know what? We're already past our time. Which means that I'm going to have a... I'm going to have a food attack here in a minute. Remember, <laughs> no, this is Lou, heard. just Lou. Remember yeah, that. Lou, contact me on the chalk tops and the top chalk. I think it's pretty cool because I didn't open them up. But you go ahead and be putting your prayer requests. Yeah, y'all oh, go ahead and put your prayer requests. Mayonnaise request. chocolate cake is good, too. I made that on something. I don't remember. one of the Y'all, if you're not subscribed to Crazy Days, go over and subscribe and start watching... And um, check out Amanda from Freedom Makers. What do we do to keep the birds from eating all of our blueberries? It's called a gun. We just shoot them. <laughs> okay. This is what they look like. This is the part that goes on the um, jar down to seal it. This is what the other side looks like. So you can write on it with your chalk tops. And... You can erase it. When you, when you change whatever's in it, it'll erase real easy. So you get to try it. Charlotte said, Lord, I'm gaining weight. Pickle pig's feet and cornbread. My, oh. daddy, used, my daddy used to eat that stuff all no, the time. No, no, no. Y'all go The man to lived to be 90-something years old, I believe. And he still eat that stuff. Okay, so Michael's saying something about mashed potato coffee cake. I was reading, I, I love recipe books, especially old recipe books, and one of them calls for putting mashed potatoes in a cake. Now, I'm I'm not 100% sure about this, but one day we just might be making a cake with mashed potatoes, see how it tastes. Are you game? That sounds interesting. <laughs> I got all kinds of recipes, y'all. Hmm. Jim and I said she's got surgery coming up, so... We've got several people that are um, that have cancer. Yes. We have Nikki Stanley, Danny's friend Harry from um, church that he went to at one time. Yeah. Um, they were really He's, good buddies. He's uh, not we, doing well. He's got brain and lung cancer combined. And we saw him about 
month and a half ago. He looked like nothing was wrong with him. And three weeks ago, he got sick, put him in the hospital, and now he is um, doing chemo and radiation. Um, Maddie says she loves my cookbook. All right. Uh, Grampy Campy's uh, wife. Lung disease. Oh, Richard, I took potted meat sandwiches to school, too. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what. There was not many times that I did not take a potted meat sandwich, and now I would not eat a can of it if I had to. I mean, yeah, I guess if I was starving, I'd, I'd eat it, but I just can't make myself eat it anymore. Okay. Well, we we fixing to pray where we can get off here. We got to go. We still have a lot to do tonight, so we got to get busy here. We got a long way to go. Okay. Father, we thank you for the day you've given us. It's been a blessed day. Uh, every day comes with its challenges, but thank you for your grace and your faith, Lord. And Father, we have so many of our subscribers tonight uh, the, and our friends that have come down with different forms of cancer. And Lord, we just pray that you'll heal their bodies. And um, if, if it's time for them to go home, then that you'll just give them grace, Father. And give the ones around them grace to be able to uh, to deal with it. And um Lord, we pray for the families, the extended families and all. And we pray for those that uh, have lost jobs. Father, sometimes people don't want to talk about it because it's just kind of personal. But we want to pray for people to have jobs, to have work, uh, to be able to have plenty of food to put up for their families, to be able to prep and to store, Lord, uh, to always be able to, to give and not have to ever borrow for anything now. And, and Father, we're so thankful that you're good to us, and we're thankful that um, we got a lot of people here tonight that said they're going to have surgery. Uh, some of them have had surgery, and we pray for uh, speedy recovery if they've had surgery. And we pray that you guide the hands of the surgeons on the ones who need surgery tonight. And, um, and Lord, we just pray for the health of each and every person here tonight. We pray that you bless their families, bless our country. Lord, as we know that um, we believe your hand has been lifted off of it, but we pray that you'll make each and every one of us aware of our surroundings and provide food for us, Lord, so that we can provide for our families now. We ask these things in thy name. Amen. All right. A heaping tablespoon of mayonnaise is great in cornbread, too. Wow. Yeah, because it kind of it has eggs in it, and it gives it a little bit of a... Yeah. Almost a buttermilky taste. It does. So it's, it's good. I made mayonnaise biscuits for him before he started cutting out the flour, and he thought they were pretty good. I'm glad. I'm kind of glad I did cut the flour out today. After they found out that the having a recall. On the <laughs> True. So all you guys have a happy Father's Day tomorrow. Enjoy your families and. I guess we'll see y'all. See y'all in the next, next video. Week. Which should be coming up shortly. Maybe Monday. Maybe Monday. Bye, guys. That's right. Bye-bye. Good enough.